How fast would you have to throw an object, say a five kilogram mass, to, to reach a height of two Earth radii? So the picture we have, we imagine, is the following. I have, um, we have the radius of the Earth here, and I am starting my ball here, being thrown and, and having it at, at some speed. And then it's going to go up so that this distance here is two Earth radii. How do we how do we do that? Well, we have we have our starting point point number one and our ending point point number two, and we looked at and and, and we look at energy. So at, at point number one, we have a certain amount of kinetic energy that we don't know. So one half times the five kilograms times some speed, and we don't know what that is. Okay. And then um, and we also have some gravitational energy, which is so we got, we're adding that, and so that's negative. Um, g, the gravitational constant, my little mass, the, the five grams, the mass of the Earth, and we're at a distance at point one of of the radius of radius of the, of, of the Earth. Okay, so this is our starting energy, and this is this is for this is for point number one, and I'm going to just rewrite this down here uh, um, uh, with the you know mass, little mass here, of five, five grams, um, and and the, this number, when you plug in the mass of the Earth and five grams and 6.7 times 10 to the negative 11 uh, joules um, um, meter square per kilogram, sorry, meter per kilogram squared, um, uh, and the radius of the Earth, uh, what we get is about, we have the minus sign, it's about three times 10 to the eight um, joules. Okay, so that's point number one. Point number two, okay, at point number two, we're imagining that we have no kinetic energy. So, so if this is kind of our kinetic energy and, and our gravitational energy here. Um, in, at point number two, we have no kinetic energy and we have a certain amount of um, gravitational energy, again, given by the same equation, except for now we are at three Earth radii away, we between between the center of the of where we are and the center of the Earth, and that's where the um, the, the distance come, comes in. This, of course, is simply so. This number here uh, is simply minus uh, uh, one times ten to the eight uh, joules. It's one third of the of, of the other term. So now I have uh, you know one half times five kilograms times b squared minus three times ten to the eight joules equals minus one times 10 to the eight joules. And I can bring it, bring the, uh, uh, the three times 10 to the eight joules over and then solve for V and I'm going to get a number around, you know, 8,900 meters per second. Okay. Um, notice what, uh, that, that when I bring the three times 10 to the eight joules over, this becomes a positive number on the right hand side, which it has to be because it's equal to a V squared. Now, how would I have changed this if I were, instead of going for two Earth radii, if, if I were to go to a, uh, excuse me, a, a height of, let's say, 19 Earth radii, uh, um, so, ima so, so imagine that this distance is 20, uh, uh, um, you know, Earth uh, or, or Earth radii, you know, what, what would what would happen there, or you know, twenty, or um, or maybe thirty, right? You know, say say thirty uh, or Earth, Earth Earth radii, you know, um, uh, distance. Well, the only change would be everything else on the left hand side would be the, the the same. So all this stuff is exactly the same. The only difference would be that I would have a thirty here. In which case, the, this number, instead of being negative 1, would be negative 0.1 times 10 to the 8 joules. In which case, I would, ha I would have a, a, a larger speed, and that speed would then be somewhere around, you know, uh, uh, 10,800 or so meters per second. Now, I could imagine what happens if I go to, you know, 300 Earth radii. Well, what happens then uh, is that the uh, uh, this term on the right hand side becomes 0 0.01 times 10 to the 8 joules and, and this becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and uh, but the, but the uh, um, but the total amount of energy on this side you know this part of it is going to be this the same so we end up approaching as we get farther and further out 
uh, the, the the speed you know is, is somewhere around 11,000 meters per second now if I throw at something much beyond 11,000 meters per second let's say 15,000 meters per second or something it's going to go infinitely far away and still have some kinetic energy it will escape it will escape because of the speed and and given that and we can see uh, uh, essentially in the uh, uh, the way the equation is that the, 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 that would come about when the kinetic energy and we have the minus G little m big M over RE if that is equal to something on the right hand side which is very very small so basically equal to zero and solving for the speed bringing it over and the little m's will end up canceling uh, what we get is the square root of 2 times g mass of the earth over the radius of the earth and so here we have this is what's called the escape speed and it's escape speed for any planet you can you can change the mass you can change the radius uh, and so on and this allows you to find out what is the minimum speed you need to throw an object uh, um, in infinitely far away to escape the gravitational influence of the object itself